In this video, we'll be demonstrating insertion of a multi-lumen access catheter, or a MAC introducer, and percutaneous sheath introducer, or PSI, in addition to flotation of a pulmonary artery, or Swan-Gantz catheter, in an intubated patient under a positive pressure ventilation. Using surface landmarks, the common carotid artery can be palpated in the triangle formed by the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid and the clavicle. The internal jugular vein often travels lateral to the common carotid artery in this space. After a wide prep of the patient's neck, sterile drapes are placed with the fenestration overlying the target anatomy. With an out-of-plane technique, the ultrasound is oriented perpendicular to the trajectory of the 18-gauge introducer needle loaded on a syringe. Alternatively, an 18-gauge angiocatheter may be used in lieu of the needle. The needle is advanced with continuous negative pressure on the syringe until venous blood is aspirated. Subtle and deliberate jabbing movements may be carefully performed to traverse the vessel wall. Under ultrasound imaging, the internal jugular vein is visualized as a compressible anechoic structure. The carotid artery is visualized medially. The tip of the introducer here is seen tenting the wall of the internal jugular vein. A subtle jabbing motion helps the needle traverse the vein wall for successful cannulation. Care must be taken as to not backwall the needle and damage the surrounding structures. The syringe is then carefully disconnected from the needle and a 0.89 mm J-tip guide wire is threaded through the hub of the introducer needle. The guide wire should not encounter any resistance with advancement. Depending on the patient's height, advancing to 20 to 25 centimeters is typically adequate. One should be cognizant of the EKG as the wire can trigger arrhythmias. The introducer needle is then carefully removed over the wire. Ultrasound can help confirm appropriate guide wire insertion. Here, the guide wire is visualized in the lumen of the internal jugular vein and traced caudally past the clavicle and visualized in the subclavian vein. Transesophageal echocardiography can also help confirm placement of the guide wire with a bicable view. The bicable view demonstrates the connection of the superior and inferior vena cava with the right atrium. The J-tip guide wire is visualized here in the right atrium. Additional verification measures include fluoroscopy and manometry. More information and recommendations are available in the practice guidelines for central venous access. A multi-lumen access introducer, or MAC introducer, is a device with two infusion ports, a 9 French brown distal lumen and a 12 gauge white proximal lumen. It's important to observe that if a catheter, such as a swan gans, is inserted into the introducer, the flow rate of the brown distal lumen is decreased significantly. With the guide wire in place, a scalpel is used to create a small incision in the skin parallel to the wire and into the sternocleidomastoid but not the vein itself. Care must be taken to avoid inadvertently creating a skin bridge between the incision and the wire. The MAC introducer with a pre-assembled dilator is then loaded onto the guide wire and advanced toward the skin. Care must be taken to ensure that the guide wire is advanced past the hub of the introducer prior to advancement of the catheter. Grasping the catheter and the dilator, the unit is advanced together through the skin incision using the alternate hand for counter traction. A slight twisting motion may be necessary. As the catheter is advanced, the guide wire is checked again before the catheter is advanced over the dilator in the tract. The dilator and the guide wire are then subsequently removed together and both ports of the introducer are aspirated and flushed with sterile saline. A percutaneous sheath introducer or PSI introducer is a device with a single infusion port, a nine French lumen, as with the MAC introducer, if the catheter is inserted into the introducer, the flow rate is decreased significantly. Insertion of a PSI catheter is performed in a similar fashion. Again, a scalpel is used to create an incision parallel to the guide wire. A 
PSI catheter with a pre-assembled dilator is loaded onto the guide wire and advanced toward the skin. The unit is similarly advanced together through the skin incision using an alternate hand for counter-traction. As you advance, the guide wire is checked again before the catheter is advanced over the dilator into the tract. The dilator and guide wire are then subsequently removed together and the side port of the introducer is aspirated and flushed with sterile saline. We will now demonstrate floating a PA line through a PSI catheter. Here, a secondary fenestrated drape overlies the hub of the PSI catheter. After the PA line is flushed and checked appropriately, ensuring the plastic sheath is in place and locked at 80 centimeters, the PA line is placed into the hub of the catheter. It is introduced with the tip pointing to the patient's left shoulder. It is then advanced to approximately 20 centimeters with the balloon deflated. It is important to recognize, however, that the catheter emerges at 13 centimeters. The tracing on the monitor should be observed carefully at all times. At this point, the PA catheter balloon is inflated and the catheter is advanced with a deliberate motion with each heartbeat. Here, the PA catheter is at 20 centimeters with the balloon deflated and the waveform visualized in yellow is that of the central venous pressure as the tip is in the right atrium. As the balloon is inflated, the PA catheter is now advanced. The abrupt change in waveform suggests that the catheter has now traversed the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. A right ventricular waveform with a steep systolic slope is seen and the right ventricular pressures are measured. As the catheter is advanced further, an increase in diastolic pressure is seen, known as the diastolic step-up, which suggests that the catheter is in the pulmonary artery. A distinct feature seen of the PA tracing is a downslope in the pressure tracing during diastole. With the pulmonary artery in the correct location, the catheter assembly is locked and the introducer is sutured to secure the line. An adhesive such as mastosol may be used to secure the dressing. A biopatch is then placed in addition to a tegaderm.